No matter how old or young you are, there are things that God wants each one of us to learn. I'm here serving the church because God is in control. My dear brothers and sisters, welcome back to the Black American experience in the Orthodox Church. One chapter that's missing in the book Becoming Orthodox is the experience of our guest today. In February of 1987, some 60 deacons were elevated to the priesthood and 200 lay people were received. Sadly, one of those deacons, Father Nathaniel Johnson, was not elevated to the priesthood due to the present racism in our church and in our country. My dear brothers and sisters, I would like to introduce to you our special guest, Father Nathaniel Johnson. Father, thank you for joining us this evening. My, my pleasure, my blessing. Father, in the past, you shared me that you had a very rich experience with spending an evening with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whose life we honored and celebrated uh, this past Monday. Would you please share with our guests, what was that experience like and how did Dr. King's life leave an impression on you uh, in your vacation and also as a young man? He was a, a very dear man, very uh, comfortable to be in his presence. Uh, and and you've you were uh, immediately uh, aware of the fact that this man was special, and yet very humble, and very uh, uh, made me feel very comfortable in in his presence. Uh, I knew that he was a very important individual in more ways than one. Uh, but the thing that was really uh, interesting and comfortable was how relaxed he made me feel to be in his presence and uh, just man-to-man uh, -man talk, man-to-man uh, -man, uh, visiting. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King was a very special individual in a lot of ways. And as, as we speak and are sharing today, tonight, um, I'm, I feel very uh, blessed that he is in God's presence and, and praying for all of us that uh, things get better than they were back in the time that he was here with us. Thank you, Father. Most of our viewers do not know that in the past you're a well-accomplished musician and at one time after your reception in the church, you worked along with other musicians on developing an American sound and orthodox hymnography. Can you please share with us as an accomplished jazz musician the importance of Black American expression in orthodox hymnography and how that experience can draw us closer together as American Orthodox Christians? I was uh, a bass fiddle uh, musician, player, up what some most most people call an upright bass. Um, I've got to play with a lot of people. Uh, uh, Big Mama Mae Thornton, uh, um, Vince Guaraldi, uh, Sammy Davis Jr. Um, it's 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 quite a list. Uh, and in all cases. Um, it was, it was a special place to be in, position to be in. Um, and all those people that I got to play with encouraged me to continue to play. And, and at that time, I was also playing and singing at the same time. Um, just as a, as a short, uh, I met my wife. Uh, she was at that time a registered nurse who was bought by a, a, a doctor friend that she worked with who they came to see our our band play and uh, that's how I met her um, and I sang to her uh, sweet Lorraine and played and uh, uh, now that we're in our 50 uh, oh I should say yeah, 49th year of marriage, uh, I can still play and sing as I did then. 
um, by God's grace. A very interesting aspect of that is that uh, Bishop Erasmus uh, was told that I was a jazz musician and, and I hadn't played for a long time, maybe uh, nine or eight, eight years. And they asked me to play for him. And so I did Sweet Lorraine uh, on the bass violin, hadn't missed a, a note. And he came up to me. At, first of all, I had to sit and eat uh, uh, the meal with him. And he said, you have to pick the bass back up because God gave you a gift for a purpose. And uh, you need to go back and, and play that bass and s start bringing people to the Orthodox faith by way of, of the music. And Amen. so I've, I've, I've started doing that already. Um, so it's, it's been an interesting experience as a musician, but uh, what a blessing to be a priest in the Orthodox Church. Uh, I can't even uh, verbally express how important it is and how you feel God's Serv serving people through through you and uh, as as a priest, and so when I do the confessions, when I do the visiting the the ill, the sick, uh, or those who can't for some reason not be at church, um, I I can feel God's blessing on me as I do it. Uh, and people say to me, which you know, how can you do it? And it's it's. The answer is, it's not me, it's God's grace uh, that allows me. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be 84 years of age in uh, uh, November. Uh, and 20 November, years old. Yeah, and so uh, God's grace, when you actually enter into God's kingdom and, and serve his people, uh, you, it's not the strength and, and, and wherewithal does not come from you. It comes from God's grace. You know, I believe that your experience is the missing chapter in the book, Becoming Orthodox, that many of us converts uh, had read in preparation uh, through catechesis of coming into the church, or that book may have been the catalyst uh, that drew us to the church in the first place after reading it. Your experience is very unique as being the one black clergy uh, among the EOC at that time and showing us your, your prayerful de determination and tenacity. What can you share with aspiring young black men that prayerfully aspire to become deacons and priests in the church today? What could you share with them with, through the experience that you had? I mean, having to faithfully serve the church for 27 years, having all the talent and the grace of the Holy Spirit that was worthy of, of, of elevation and, and especially having to watch your peers who knew that you were capable of serving uh, to the priesthood. Can you please encourage our young men on what can they do today to keep that same prayerful tenacity as they develop and serve uh, within their local parishes and one day have the right disposition of heart uh, to go through these things in their preparation uh, to the priesthood or the diaconate. The, the, the one, the most important thing for all of us, both no matter what our stand, uh, circumstances are in the church, is to know that uh, it's, it's not something uh, where we're in a position where we say, look at me. Um, First of all, you need to be praying mm -hmm. on, a, on a regular basis. You need to be praying, uh, asking for God's grace, asking for God to give you the strength and the power and the knowledge to do his serving, serving him. And whatever the outcomes are, um, God allows certain things to happen in our lives so that we because we, as priests, as deacons, uh, as uh, acolytes, we are only servants of God. And anything that we are, that we may think of as success, 
does not belong to us. It belongs to God. God, and in, in the process of serving God, we all have the duty of entering into the kingdom. And the only way you can enter into the kingdom is not to look at yourself as someone special. You're no more special than uh, the little two-year-old that's in the church running around making sounds while the service is going on. They're as important as you and I. And it matters not what your title is, who you are. Uh, your job is to continue to serve God, to continue to do the best of your ability to be ready to serve an individual who's, who's in pain mentally or physically or whatever. And whatever the outcome is, has nothing to do with you except unless you are praying for that person. That's your part. You praying for the person, the, the outcome is God's. And so the one thing that uh, I have to watch over myself all the time is to never get to the point where I think I'm somebody special. No, I'm not. I'm just a servant of God, ready to do whatever God wants me to do and not worry about the outcome because the outcome is not mine, it's God's. And so uh, whatever you see, what, and, and not making any judgment or, or uh, evaluation about how the outcome is supposed to be because the outcome's not yours, the outcome is God's. And so everything comes from God. Father, thank you so much for sharing with me that experience and how you've kept that prayerful tenacity of almost 30 years of service in the church without uh, having had a promotion. I believe this will be a great impact to the current generation of Black clergy that are being prepared for service in the church and seminary and through diaconal training. Uh, I've been able to observe the transition of your generation, this coming forth generation of urban missions especially with the recent passing of the, the current pioneer in many ways or voice of urban missions, uh, Father Moses Berry, may his memory be Amen. eternal. Amen. Father, in the past, you shared with me uh, the importance and the inspiration of your parents' prayerful uh, service and how they shared with you the same determination that you just shared with us in your service well, number one, their service in a church and how it transferred or tradition to in your service to the church. Can you please share with our, our viewers the importance of, of your relationship with your parents, uh, their prayerful experience that they traditioned and shared with you and how much of an impact that was to you throughout your life and now bringing you to a priest today uh, in the winter of your life? Uh, first of all, my, my parents, uh, my mother and my father. Uh, when Sunday came around, we had Sunday go meeting clothes that we, <laughs> yeah, Sunday go meeting clothes, which meant the 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 we had a, a, a suit, we had shoes, um, and those were only worn and and used going to church. Mm. You. Get to do anything else with those clothes or uh, those shoes. Um, along that same line, uh, my mother and my father taught me that, uh, you know, I was the oldest uh, boy, you know, first son, first born, and the oldest one. And I had two sisters, three sisters. And my mother and father taught me, you never raise your hand to a woman. Mm -hmm. Be that woman two years mm -hmm. old or 80 years old. You never raised your hand or, or spoke uh, in, a, in a, a disrespectful manner toward women. Um, and I can remember getting uh, I won't say spanking. It was a beating. 
that <laughs> that went through. And so I learned never to raise uh, uh, my hand toward a woman, to have total respect. Um, and uh, on so that Sundays, you didn't do anything except uh, activity that had something to do with the church, either Sunday school or uh, afternoon uh, session of uh, your age group uh, in the church. Everything uh, Sunday was for the church. Um, and so from that, I have learned to have real respect for, well, it's beyond respect now. Uh, I've learned that how special it is. Uh, today, uh, we have uh, an average of five divine liturgies a week. Wow. Uh, yes. And so I, I did a divine liturgy this today. I'll, I'm doing a divine liturgy tomorrow. Um, and in the Orthodox Church, that meant, uh, that means uh, you don't eat or drink anything until after you've had communion. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's, it's quite, uh, it's quite a, 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 a deal to, to uh, learn a new way of worshiping God. Uh, and because there are two priests, myself and, and uh, Father Majmadar, uh, Seraphim Majmadar, who we, we serve the church. And so um, it's, it's, you know, especially at my age, everyone looks and says, how can you do that? And I'm not doing it. <laughs> I have to keep reminding them that I'm here standing before you, serving the church, serving God, because God is in control. God is, is my strength and my power and my wherewithal, not me. Mm -hmm. So uh, no matter how old or young you are, there are things that God wants each one of us to learn. And each one of us has a, 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 very, a different path to the, his, to the heavenly kingdom. I look forward to my path of getting, you know, everyone says, well, how, how can you do that as old as you are? That has nothing to do with it. it, is, it the, what it has to do with is, are you willing to serve God no matter what? I am willing to serve God, whatever it takes to get up and go and do his, his, do, his work. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to do that. So oh, man. That, that's what, that's what the, the church is all about. Uh, you know, in the past, it was church was just Sunday. That's not the case today for me. Uh, the church is how oh, we're having, we're having a, a Vespers today, or we're having a, a divine liturgy uh, with matins. And, you know, in other words, there's something going on on a daily basis uh, as, as far as the church is concerned. And that's, a, I look at that as a real blessing in disguise. And after a while, you start to feel that blessing when you're in, in, in the midst of, of such activity. Praise God. Thank you, Esther, the grace of the Holy Spirit. Father Nathaniel, throughout your service, you've been a great inspiration uh, to myself and others. I've always been an attentive uh, listener when you speak, especially when we met uh, six years ago. I believe it was six years ago at the St. Moses of the Black Conference uh, held in Princeton. Before we go, if there are some last words that you would share with this current generation, of black clergy in the church and the goal of pursuing of uh, a true evangelical spirit within the Orthodox Church here in America, what would you say to us in the pursuit, planting of, of seeds, the watering of those seeds, laying the foundation of seeing the doors of the church open to all Americans? Uh, what would you share with us as a final word? A final word is, first of all, Anything negative does not belong to you and I. Mm -hmm. There should be no complaint or no uh, judgment. Judgment belongs to God and God only. So we 
do not judge or expect certain aspects of life in this society or in this world. Um, and therefore, and it matters not whether they're uh, Mexican, Chinese, uh, wh whatever race or group they've come from, we all belong to God. God created all of us and he has a purpose for each individual. And you and I have no uh, right or privilege to make a judgment about anything and especially others, but also especially yourself. We do not make any judgments. Judgment belongs to God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The, the one thing that I emphasize a lot, because I think it's very important, is never forget the Theotokos, the mother of God. The, the, she is a special individual. So just to, just to give you an idea of how special she is, when when Jesus was a young man, young well, he wasn't even a man yet. He was like in his preteen years. And they went to a wedding. This is in the Bible. They went to a wedding. And the, at the wedding, they ran out of wine. And she came to him and she said, they have no wine. And Jesus answered to her as a young man. <laughs> He said, what is that to you and me? Um, and normally a, a mom would reprimand the son or, you know, whoever, the, the, you know, uh, you know, you should get them some wine. That's not what she did. She did. She ignored what he said. And she turned to the servants and she said, whatever he says, do it. And she did not even look at Jesus. She walked away. <laughs> and the good mother. And the mother. And what did Jesus do? As a son, he obeyed his mom and created wine, the best wine that the, the, the people had ever drank uh, in, at this wedding. And of course, the the servants knew where that wine came from but the people when they came they went to the man who was doing the celebration and they said you saved the best wine for the last you know where did it come from well the only ones who knew were the servants where that wine came from and of course it doesn't say it, but those servants became believers in Jesus Christ because they knew where that wine came from. And they know knew that it was the best wine that they had ever served to anyone. So there are stories like that in the Bible. If we'll just pay it, pay attention as we read the Bible and study the Bible, there are all kinds of things like that story uh, that Jesus performed as a young man, as as an as a young uh, as an older man, and, and in his life here on earth with us, we have to look at those and and re keep revisiting them so we can be impressed with who Jesus really was, and know that he is one of the Holy Trinity. He's he's a, he he's a son of God, the Father. He's God the Son and the Holy Spirit. We have to we have to look at the at the Holy uh, this the church that we belong to and really study and reread over and over again so that it gets impressed upon our hearts and upon our minds what we are a part of um, and become the the Orthodox Christians that we really are have been called to. Um, it's really important that we understand that. And each individual, don't look at, uh, at your neighbor. 
each individual has a path that God has created for him. And we have to look at our path and stick with that and pray about that. Ask the Holy Lady Theotokos Theotol to, to watch over us and make sure that we uh, are following uh, the path that has been established for each individual. I'm a firm believer that in our pursuit of restoring orthodoxy to America, that one way of doing so was pointing to our Blessed Mother and the supplications that we offer to her. As you said, she always points to our Son, our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ. To our viewers, thank you so much for spending this time with us, and welcome again to Season 2 of the Black American Experience in the Orthodox Church. Thank you. Thank, thank you for the opportunity, and, and uh, God bless every one of us. And, thank you so uh, much, Father. Amen. Oh,